How dare you be right? I mean, what's going on? I mean, Harry Dent, Robert Kiyosaki, Jim Rickards, and of God, um, Mark Boris, Martin North. I have gone over all of my old tapes. They've all said the property market was going to hell in the handbasket. Don't buy another property. You'll, you know, you're going to lose your money. This was three, four years ago, five years ago, some of them. And here we are. And the market continued to rise. I remember yes. you and I and a whole bunch of people with Port Phillip Publishing yes. six, seven, eight years ago in that stuffy hotel suite and you had a yes. debate with harry and harry said then was it 2017 maybe you yeah. and harry said that there's going to crash now and you said no very calm and cool as you are Phil. no harry it's not going to crash until 26 27. now harry held his breath he went red in the face and um you know we 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 had to give him oxygen but phil <laughs> What's going on? How dare you be out of step with all these people? Uh, Greg, we've got to stay humble about this. Um, <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only ever as good as my next forecast. That's the first thing. I don't have any magical um, crystal ball. What I do have is a knowledge of this. There are three things that are required to produce everything you see around you. So, you, you know, you look around your own house, whatever it is, you have to have three things. You have to have land, labor, and capital and i don't want to get into too too much um economic terms but you need those you need those three things um to produce wealth from the beginning of the economists david ricardo and for adam smith and forward in the um mid 1800s when all the, the the american capitalists and the railroads came in and america really got going created a prodigious amount of wealth that was taken by just a couple of people really the vanderbilts and the jp morgans and the like uh, and the oil barons, Rockefeller and so. And there was a, a reform movement that came through that said that the wealth had to be better distributed. One of those guys came through in the economic sphere. You know, there was a lot. There was Sinclair, Upton Sinclair and a few others. And one of the guys was Henry George. And he came through and he showed that the land is really important. And land has an earnings, as uh, labor does with wages and capital does with profits. Land has an earnings base too. It's called rent. If you collect that rent, if you, if you allow people... If you allow everybody in the world to own the land, but because they are able to own the land, you you owe the, the rent of the earnings of that land to the community. If that was put into practice, everybody would be rich. And this was found around about 1880, 1890, 1900s. This was found to be really offensive to the landlord class, to the capitalist classes, to those that were collecting the rent. And there, only, and there was only a few families. A job was done with the economists just after just about 100 thereabouts. It's documented. I just happened to have it's in. It's a book called The Corruption of Economics. It's written by Mason Gaffney and a very famous now called Fred Harrison. They documented how the concept of land was absolutely deliberately written out of economics. And so going forward from about 1920, a bit more, Mason Gaffney names the, the several economists. That's because the American institutions and the universities, they owned, and so did the railroads, owned a prodigious amount of land. So they wrote land out of the economy, out of economics. And every single person that's gone through the economics faculty since that time does not have a concept of land being a factor of production that produces wealth. And the results of that are seen today where you've got absolutely every mainstream economist that simply uh, will never be able to forecast and will never get economics correct because they don't include land in their equation of economics. You know, people go on about this QAnon, the conspiracy of everything else, and the politicians around the world now start arguing about this and that and all the conspiracy stuff. There, re there really is only one conspiracy. That's the, that land's been written out of economics. And consequently, the Fed has three, four, five thousand economists working for them. This is one of the biggest institutions in the world and they don't know what's coming next, right? It, it's it's just never ceased to amaze me. So once you put land into the equation, you now have a, a complete picture of economics and you know that because the earnings of land is permitted to capitalize into a price, you absolutely must get a real estate cycle. It, it's just absolutely 100%. And then now we've got a system where we allow the banks to create credit on this earnings of land, which has been capitalized into a price, that must create 
a volatility where land prices keep going up. And one final thing I can add to that, which the world doesn't get, once you see this, it's just, it's like being able to write, it's astounding. It just opens up a whole, a whole panorama of being able to actually see things before they happen. The earnings of land, which is now called land price, because the earnings, it's like a PE really, the, the price, price is the capitalised earnings, the PE. When the earnings of land capitalise into a price, this is what the early reformers knew. And David Ricardo proved this back in 1810, land, the earnings of land, land price must take the gains. So therefore, land price must go up, absolutely must, 100% certain must go up. The more discoveries we make, the more that people settle in big cities, the more things that people do, the more communal that we get, the higher land price must go. It's really, really simple, it really is. And you know, one, my subscribers, and once they've seen it, it puts them on a road, it puts, just puts them on a different, completely different road than they've been on before, it just wakes them up.